talk to okay, so many Okay, we're people. back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. And the other person in the room, so to speak, you know, the, the virtual room is Jane Sawyer of the SBA, Adventures in Small Business. And boy, are we having an adventure these days. What do you think, Jane? Yeah, it's quite an adventure, that's for sure. It, uh, things are happening very quickly. Um, lots of uncertainty, lots of surprises, um, but we're trying to make our way forward uh, and help more small businesses here. So that's yeah. that's it. We're we're most of my staff working remotely, like so many other businesses in Hawaii. We're lucky to be here, but we have a big job right now. There's a pretty heavy lift to help our small business community. Yeah. Well, this. I mean, you are the um, what do I want to say? Um, not the mother, but the auntie. <laughs> of, okay, of small empty. business small business in hawaii you've been helping them and um, affectionately supporting them for years and years a lifetime even and so mm -hmm. it's uh it, it must be really an experience for you one day to find out that uh, that the federal government is allocating over two trillion dollars i said trillion dollars uh try to help mm -hmm. business and do and do a resurrection uh, in COVID. And so uh, I'd like to hear how, how it came to you. I mean, you're sitting there wondering about how small business is going to do. All of a sudden, there's this big federal legislation. And then in the same moment, you realize a lot of it is going to be on you, Jane. How was, how was that moment? <laughs> you know, well, you know, it was trying to see how it was all going to work and realizing just how big a task it was going to be. Um, but like so many other things, it really takes everybody getting involved and chipping in. And when we started to see the structure of this, because we just watched as the um, pandemic declarations came in and, and we saw we were gonna be staying home and that travel was gonna be curtailed. And what is Hawaii about? But small business and hospitality and travel uh, so, we knew this was gonna have a terrible impact locally. And to see that they kind of, they responded pretty quickly and put a lot of money into helping employees stay on the payroll, help small businesses at least sustain themselves. But we never knew how big this was going to get even as they're designing the program. So yeah. basically we were able to, first step was um, in, the, in the middle of March, we could get a disaster declaration for small businesses to get take advantage of the economic injury disaster loan, which was something that is a traditional existing type of loan that's offered through the SBA's Office of Disaster Assistance. But we also knew that that wasn't going to be enough. And um, typically that's the kind of loan program that you'd see pop up at the request of the governor, gets a declaration from the president or the SBA administrator, the Department of Agriculture, because we've had a hurricane or a tornado, something like that. And it helps the business recover either from the physical damage or the economic injury, what they've lost in terms of revenue um, as a result of the impact of a, of a physical disaster, or in this case, the pandemic. So that wave came out and we got the de first declaration around um, March 25th. And then on March 27th, the uh, Congress approved the CARES Act. And it, it's a big long name, Coronavirus Aid, Relief and Economic Security Act. And our role was to help small businesses tap into some financial relief. And that would be through an expanded economic injury or idle program with the Office of Disaster Assistance or a whole brand new program called the Payroll Protection Program Loan. And so not not crazy. all the programs um, you know in in the CARES Act uh, fall on the on the SBA, but some of them clearly do. Which ones right. are you concerned with? Which ones are you implementing? The ones that really concern us are specifically um, the idle loan, the payroll protection program, uh, and then we have some other small business relief that we're able to offer for our current borrowers or, or existing borrowers who are involved in the SBA loan programs now. If you've had an, a current SBA 7A loan or a, an SBA 504 loan, you, starting this month, you can get some relief in making those payments. Actually, SBA will make your loan payment for you wow. on any one of those loan programs. And they'll do that for six months. 
So they'll pay the bank the fees, they'll pay, the, they'll pay for that loan uh, going forward. So we've gotten information out to our lenders and hopefully to our borrowers. It's pretty much, we just will, you know, the, the banks will determine all the loans. You have to be in currently in good standing when, the, when it starts. So that means your loan has to be paid up. You can't have a workout plan. You can't be in default. But if you're in good standing, we'll cover those loan payments for six months. Oh, that's terrific, any one terrific. Of those loans. And we will defer disaster loan payments that are those long-term disaster loans with the low interest. Those mm -hmm. will be deferred for a six-month period. Don't have to so make that's any helping payments. a lot of businesses right there so they can yeah. keep their money working on payroll and rents and other things so they don't have to pay back um, an SBA loan debt. So, so what, suppose I ways. don't have an SBA loan. Suppose I don't have any loan. Suppose I've been able to conduct my business on a you know, a non-indebtedness basis, never had to make a loan. I'm, I'm a good mm -hmm. manager, no, no debt, whatever. Okay. Does that put me behind the eight ball as far as these programs are concerned? No, um, particularly because probably right now, most of the businesses may be shut down. You're experiencing some kind of loss because the regular customers aren't coming through the door. Um, employees can't come to the office. You're not considered an essential business. You know, your supply chain has been interrupted. So there are programs that will help you with that loss, um, whether it is the economic injury disaster loan, which will cover, you know, your overhead or your regular expenses that you aren't able to meet because of the pandemic. And that loan application you can find at sba.gov. Right now, because these programs have been in such demand, both programs are shut down, waiting more funding. We had $350 billion into the PPP fund, and that was exhausted in 12 days, 12 to 13 days across the country. Those loans, all that money went away. Mm -hmm. um, and that loan program is specifically to help you keep a small business, keep their employees on payroll for eight weeks at least. There's a portion of it that could be applied to, say, um, your mortgage interest, your rent, your overhead, utilities, things like that to keep your business running. But the majority of the money and the whole purpose is so that you can keep your employee on the payroll, getting their benefits, um, and not, you know, they may not even have to come into work, but the point is to keep them off unemployment and let the state, you know, not have that kind of pressure, but the small business can keep their employees so that hopefully when we're all back up and we can be out doing business again, we're ready to go, we're ready to start. So, and that one is open to, there's no collateral requirement there, no personal guarantees, no borrower or lender fees that are payable by the borrow, the, the SBA, because that's normally one of the things that goes with an SBA loan and no payments on this loan for six months either. So this can be a new borrower, new SBA. Yeah, this one goes through the banks. So all of our the banks and credit unions here have been participating in a big, big way. In that 12-day period for Hawaii, we saw them get 11,553 loans approved. So that's uh, a lot. Is this, do the banks require the applicant? I mean, I, I know it's like past tense already, but did uh -huh. the banks require the applicant to be an existing customer or borrower? Or would, would uh, my business, the one that has never uh, taken any debt with anyone, uh, also qualify for that program? You would qualify for that program. You could, we, you know, we recommended first go to your, your borrower of record, your bank of record, who mm -hmm. you do most of your business with and start there. Um, sometimes people had gotten an offer or worked with, with another organization, say their PEO who manages their payroll, and they worked with them to submit a loan application to one of the financial institutions. So it may have introduced a new customer to the banks. And that was fine too. Um, we knew that the money was going to be depleted pretty quickly. It sounds like a huge amount um, of $349 billion, but it did, it did go out pretty quickly. And uh, let's see, I'm trying to look at some of the, these statistics here. Over 1,661,000 loans were made across the country in just 12 days. 
even in Hawaii, in, in the entire time I've been here as the tutu of the SBA. Today, um, tutu, thank we you. We haven't made that many loans uh, uh, at all, you know, in the entire 28 years. So, and probably even the entire time the SBA has been here, we haven't seen that number of loans in Hawaii um, ever before. So now the challenge is getting the money out the door. So yeah. we've, we've approved them. We've, we've you know, managed to bring uh, over $2 billion to the state. And this will go when the, when the small business gets their funds, their, their role then is to make sure that they get their employees on payroll, if they can get them back into their um, roles in the business line, or if they have different assignments, maybe different duties, that's important. And then the feature is that if that's what, how they use the money appropriately, there is forgiveness. So that, may, that money will be forgiven and you won't even have to pay it back as a loan. What are the conditions so, for forgiveness? Conditions for forgiveness, uh, let me look it up. So the, um, get the right stuff. You have to bring the employees back and have the same number of employees on your payroll and you have to use um, the proceeds, I mean, the, the amount of the loan is determined based on the payroll that you have in the business. And this program is open to, you know, independent contractors, sole proprietors. You can count your own income up to $100,000 um, when you make this loan request. And even though we've exhausted the funds, it looks like Congress is accepting the fact that there is a need out there because this pandemic has, has been so severe and it's extending so long. So we're looking at them potentially approving another allocation for this program even later this week. So oh, we'll be later this week. Later yeah. this week. So um, if you're just hearing about this program for the first time and you haven't, you know, looked at an application, I recommend you go to sba.gov, look at the yellow banner at the top, and click through to um, small business loan relief, and it will give you the information on the PPP program, uh, loan program, and uh, application forms, what you need to do to apply. It's very, very, very basic what you do go through your bank. So you oh. might, if you have a business banker, give your banker a call and ask them mm -hmm. what, how they're going to approach this next, this next wave of- are, are, are there bank charges on these loans? Are there loan fees or- No. Bank, this is all- SB, SBA is paying the fees to the bank. Oh, very good, very good, very good. Yeah. So Jane, you you expect the you expect the, the second tranche of money to be in the order of the first tranche two two trillion plus? I, I don't it think it'll different? be that much. I think you know if if we looked at what was for this specific program, it was about three hundred and about three hundred forty nine three hundred forty nine billion um, mm -hmm. for the first wave, and that, the rumors have the talk we're hearing is probably about two hundred and fifty billion. So it'd be a little bit smaller. Um, but still to get out, get the money out to small businesses, keep your employees, be ready to go when, when we get through this. Mm -hmm. You know, so we aren't we aren't looking at funding new things for a business. We're trying to help them sustain themselves through this, keep their employees ready to go. I mean, this is an opportunity if you if you can't use them for the typical work that they're doing, it's the time to do professional development train up on customer service, you know, do some other things that need to be in, in the office, scan all those old documents, get those projects underway, assign a team to redo your, your employee manual, you know, um, sure. have, your, have your people do a white paper on something that's important to you, or even look at how can you volunteer some time for a community activity. Uh, and that would be okay important. too. It doesn't matter what they do. <clears throat> um, they just you have to get them on the payroll at the same rate of pay yeah. or up to 75 percent of the same rate of pay and the other thing is that you get them get them back on benefits because you factor your loan amount by figuring your payroll your annual payroll everybody up to every wages salaries uh all types of compensation for each employee um take that total um you also then can add in other payroll costs. So your health care expenses, the cost for health insurance for your employees, and your 501, um, you know, your retirement benefits, your all of these things can be factored in to what you and you figure your monthly allocation for payroll, then you multiply it by two and a half times. 
and that gives you the amount of the loan that you, you would be able to. You can use a portion of that up to 25% under certain circumstances within that period of time um, to pay rent, utilities, um, your transportation costs, um, say you have a company vehicle, um, your mortgage interest, can't pay your mortgage uh, principal, but your mortgage interest. So it's gonna help you with some of those fixed costs that you have, just to get through. It's yeah, not this, going to, So you know, it can help um, you with things other than straight compensation to an employee. You can, you can pay business fixed expenses with it? Yeah, you can pay some of those things, but the point, you, to get the forgiveness, you need to apply the majority of that, that 75% or more, and have the same number of employees at the same rate of pay on your payroll for eight weeks. And that mm -hmm. eight week term usually starts once you get your funding, once you get your disbursement from the bank. Well, this sounds so, like the Oklahoma land rush, actually. So you have 350 out there. Everybody knows you have whatever, the 350, 360 mm -hmm. billion. Um, and um, a lot of them, employers, uh, small businesses are going to want to do that because they're really suffering. Um, mm -hmm. So they, they rush at it. And you mentioned that out of the 360, um, uh, 2 billion uh, came to Hawaii. Uh, who, yes. how, how, do, how, do, how do you allocate the 2 billion around Hawaii? Um, is it first come, first serve? It was first come, first serve getting into the queue. And um, as I said, you know, it's through the bank. So the banks do a little bit of screening. It's, a, it's like a four page application, which kind of determines your eligibility and nonprofits can also apply for this. So certain types of nonprofits who, particularly those who have a role in um, helping, you know, doing social services, running daycare facilities, providing meals for seniors, um, feeding families. Um, those, those organizations were also eligible to um, Okay, well, that's pretty, that's pretty so good. So now in the next tranche of money, there. the mm -hmm. next tranche of money, um, how, you know, there, uh, obviously there are, um, there are there are businesses out there that didn't get as, as a result yes. of the first, the first bill. Um, mm -hmm. So the next, the next tranche, hopefully soon, uh, will come down the pike. How will they know and how will they get online so that they can get a piece of the second tranche? Mm -hmm. They should go to their, take a look at our website, make sure you understand the program and feel that you'll be eligible. Then you should um, call your bank. See if, go to their website as well. A lot of them have a lot of information and how to apply online because we're not going into the bank if we can avoid it, right? So most of their, most of the applications were taken remotely and um, the bank would be in touch with you. You could submit your application I don't know if their portals are open right now. That may require a phone call or they may have something posted on their on their website in terms of when they will start accepting applications. But the application forms are the same for everyone. Um, they may ask for a little bit more information, but they explain all of that on their webpage. And I would start to gather your information together, try and calculate the information. If you have, um, you know, questions about it, you can go and go to the SBA website. There are frequently asked questions posted there that will help you figure how to calculate um, your employees payroll or call your PEO if you have one, talk to your CPA, talk to you, your tax preparer, look at your old tax documents. So, because those are all source materials that you'll get. You need to make sure you have ready your EIN number, your social security number, um, things like that, but uh, those those are the kind of documents to start gathering now and have ready because it probably will go very very quickly. I know many of the banks still have um, loans in queue uh, from the first round of applications that were submitted to the banks. So they did phenomenal numbers. They were working through the weekends. They were doing double shifts, um, moved people from you know the. The oh, it pays, it pays to start to right now. It pays to start right now. It pays to yes. get your act together so that when, when the land rush starts again, uh, could mm -hmm. be in a few days, uh, you got your papers together. You know what the application form looks like. Maybe you filled it out. Maybe the bank mm -hmm. even let you submit it. Yeah. So um, yes. this is a good time to get, get organized, to look at the mm -hmm. sba.gov and go to your bank and, and find out how you can get on that line early instead of lose out. 
So mm -hmm. uh, one other question about the, the first tranche. You said it was two billion out of three sixty. That's not one fiftieth. Um, you know, with fifty states, uh, who makes mm -hmm. that allocation of that two billion? And will the allocation be the same next time? It's it's not allocated by state or by population. And actually, when people went in and really looked at it from a number of different ways, Hawaii did very well and got a higher pro rata share than many of the other states did. And I think that is, you know, a lot of hard work up front, our resource partners helping and talking to people, the banks really getting out in front of this as well. So, um, I mean, the average loan size was under $200,000. So even when we hear some of those stories about the organizations that may have grabbed 10 million, it's uh, it, the, the statistics show that the largest proportion of the loans were under 150,000. Um, and the, av the overall average loan size was $206,000. So, and it went to um, small businesses in construction, professional, scientific and technical services, manufacturing, healthcare, accommodations and food service and retail were the, were the, the types of business that were in the queue first uh, and got more a higher percentage of the loans. Mm -hmm. So they hadn't really separated it out. And it was the diligence of the, the lenders and the banks being able to input into this system. Uh, and we stood up this, this loan with, you know, it goes against everything any banker has ever learned about financing credit. We don't check credit. We, um, we're not asking for collateral. We're not asking for a guarantee from anybody except for the, for the SBA. And then if there's some money that's left and you've, you've used it for um, non-payroll or non-approved costs, um, you can it will turn into a, a two-year term loan at 1% interest after the forgiveness is determined. So um, that well, that's the way you catch the inappropriate ones. If they don't mm -hmm. demonstrate that they did, they meet, met, met those conditions, they will have to pay it back. And, you, uh, you pay it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and who, if you, and if you misrepresent it to get credit and that becomes uh, apparent, um, that's a no-no and it won't be nice, you know? <laughs> so they will. <laughs> so, you know, um, people need the money to survive. We want uh, to come out on the other side of this and hopefully more people will be whole than totally broken. So, um, you know, we, we hope that we're using these funds well. Yeah. Okay. We have a few minutes left. I want to ask you some macro questions. Uh -oh. You know, it's uh, <clears throat> the ghost of Christmas future. What do you worry about, you know, Jane, because you are the, may I say the tutu of small business <laughs> in Hawaii and you have such a kindness about you and um, you must be feeling the pain, not only of the people who have, uh, who you know whose businesses are under pressure but more than that even the people who have not been able to get a, a piece of uh, of the cares act and and who mm -hmm. are you know therefore under greater pressure of, of you know of collapsing um what about them and and what percentage and how many are there and what is what is going to mm -hmm. happen to them and in turn what's going to happen to the state i know it's a three o'clock in the morning wake up question and i wonder what you think about it when you wake up thinking about it uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, I do wake up at three o'clock in the morning a lot. Uh, it is a, a grave concern because it, small business is the backbone of our economy. How are we going to get going again? And what is that really going to look like? It's not going to be without pain for most everybody here. Um, so we really do want to um, do our best to make sure that everybody knows not only about these funds, but you know that we have some way to help them in the interim and maybe before we get back up to uh, what might be our normal, more normal operating speed, that they're doing the right things to assess and evaluate their business or, or look to create new opportunities. Or um, if there were things that they needed to do or wanted to do to improve their business, maybe this is a time when you're not producing you know, as much, you're not uh, seeing as many customers that you can take the time to really work through in a careful and creative way how to improve your business and make it more nimble. Um, you know, how can you invest maybe a little bit more in, in your employees? And by invest, it can be time, it can be energy, it can be interest. Um, 
to build your ohana stronger. Um, and maybe that sounds a little naive, but sometimes you've got to grab on to whatever, whatever it takes to um, make the better outcome, you know? Um, so we're hoping that more people will get in. And um, if one, one organization does tap into um, these funds and they can help another, you know, whether it is by uh, adding, adding some of the talent of their people, combining forces to do a community-based project, something like that, everybody wins. So, but I do worry about, you know, how are we gonna get the technical assistance to people who need it? How do we uh, overcome some of our language barriers and some of our prejudice? How do we get, um, you know, more, more money to more new businesses or younger businesses or those that don't typically have access to capital? They can rise out of the ashes, you know, as they say, and and start all kinds of new business. Again, a new, uh, maybe a, a more youthful, innovative economy coming from younger people who are willing to take a chance of being entrepreneurs, uh, because there will be there will be ashes to climb from. Uh, there'll be there'll be opportunities. So at that point, and this is what I would have asked Jane. I will ask Jane later as a last question and a question going forward. Uh, what happens then? What happens to these entrepreneurs who come and make bids in the bankruptcy court, who buy the assets that are left beyond, but behind, who will buy the assets that are left behind by the failed small business? Uh, the SBA will be there. The SBA has other programs, traditionally, that still exist, uh, that will continue to exist uh, when we try to resurrect um, the casualties. And we'll be talking to Jane about that too, as soon as we can have another show with her. And we will have another show with her. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech and for Adventures in Small Business. I'm Jay Fidel. We'll see you soon. Aloha.